What's going on, Audioholics? Tyler here from Audioholics Anonymous, and today I bring to you yet another review in our Halloween-a-thon, where we go through and review every Halloween movie leading up to the new one, Halloween Kills, which, by the way, has a ghost song on the soundtrack, so it's already the best movie ever made. Yeah, right? obviously. Yeah. I mean, not even any question. Yeah, yeah, of course. So with me today, I have Logue Waffle. Ooh, ooh. And uh, we're going to be talking about Halloween 4 or 6. 6. See, like... <laughs> That's a good testament to how great this movie already yeah. is. Uh, I watched 6 movies! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, this movie was pretty bad. Yeah, um, yeah. This is like... So if... Five was like the point where they started to just go in the whole no fucks given direction. This is where they kind of just like reached that epitome. And yet I still think it took itself a little bit too seriously. And that's really like the major problem with it. Yeah. Um, so before we begin, I should point out the major thing is uh, there are two versions of this movie, technically speaking. There's the theatrical cut, and then there is also the producer's cut. The theatrical cut is what most people are familiar with. That's what Tyler and I watched. And um, there are a couple minor differences. Uh, some story elements are changed. Uh, the producer's cut actually has a little bit more Don Pleasance. This was his last movie. Um, he died before it was ultimately finished, and they had to do like some clever editing and uh you know spread as much don yeah, pleasance as they shots. possibly could um but it, um i would recommend if you were to watch this movie watch the theatrical actually i'd say watch the producer's cut and then go back and like watch like a cut comparison or something like that and uh check out the theater cut because i believe the producer's cut is a little bit better yeah probably um, Either way, both of these movies aren't very good. Yeah, they're not. But at least in the producer's cut case, like... It explains yeah. a little bit more, and I believe the plot is a little bit more coherent. Probably my biggest problem with Halloween 5 is it introduces these plot elements, but then never explains them. Exactly. It's like, oh, there's like a black man and... Well, a man that's cloaked in black. Yeah. And <laughs> not just a random black dude. Like, black oh. man! <laughs> Oh, there's, like, a thorn th mark on Michael's wrist. What does that mean? And then they finally explain everything in this movie, and it kind of fucking sucks unless you watch the producer's version. Yeah. Otherwise, you're probably not understanding much of anything regarding the plot of this movie. Yeah, this movie... So, um, this movie uh, was the first one under the guides of the Weinstein brothers. That is, yes, Harvey Weinstein... Um, and this is the worst thing Harvey Weinstein has ever been a part. No, um, this <laughs> the worst is, thing that Harvey Weinstein has ever been inside of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's inappropriate. Um, no, uh, this is just not a good movie. Um, there was constant, like, battling between the Weinsteins and the producers of the movie, hence why there are essentially two cuts of the movie. Yeah. Um, so, but the positives are, when this is good, it is unintentionally hilarious. That's what I was going to say. Like, there's a jump scare in this movie where Loomis just, like, I don't even know how he got into the house. He just walked in the front door, I guess. He and knew he's people just like, lived there. And he just goes like, <laughs> like a fucking sheep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is great. And then there's also, like, they're showing, like, these drawings that this kid did of, like, people stabbing, like, him stabbing people or something like that. Yeah. And, like, this fucking butthead like he's supposed to be like butthead or something like this fucking dumbass frat boy teen is just like uh, uh, that's pretty cool yeah it's <laughs> like between five and six this is the movie where no fucks were given for 
most of most it. of the movie and when fucks were given it just falls apart faster when you actually try to take these movies seriously like okay rule number one when you are constructing a movie and this should be taught in every writing class don't bite off more than you can chew if you can't do a serious movie do something stupid the fan base would appreciate that more if yeah. this was just a stupid movie where it was like Nightmare on Elm Street and Michael Myers was just like some wise cracking smart ass and like pimping out the power glove or something like that. Would fans be pissed? Absolutely. But they would appreciate that more than like this half assed attempt to be a serious movie. Yeah, and let's just uh scroll right on to the negatives. I yeah. I don't like Michael Myers in this movie. He's no. essentially just like a crony of this cult of thorns, and I don't really like the cult of thorns side. Yeah, that is definitely a very. I, I I don't know. Are there really fans of this cult of thorns side plot, or no. do we just universally agree that's terrible? I think we pretty much just like as fans of Halloween universally agree that the cult of thorns was a really bad idea. I mean, it's literally. Saying, oh, you want to know why Michael killed his sister and then tried to kill Lori? Because the stars told him to, man. Yeah. The stars did Spooky. it. Spooky. Like, it's just incredibly dumb. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. But, like, as much as I dislike the explanations for other monsters, like Jason had a, like, a parasite demon or something, and Freddy had the dream demons, and, like, I don't really like those, but... Like They're canonically better, in that universe, like Halloween is a more is a slightly, generally speaking, Halloween is a slightly more grounded franchise. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, does Michael Myers have some supernatural abilities? Yeah, you could argue in some movies, but like, I, I mean, apart from Halloween three, that is just not in in any way grounded in reality. But mm, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, Halloween is a more grounded franchise. Like, especially, yeah, like, the first two Halloweens. It just feels weird to bring in this weird supernatural aspect. Yeah, it, it just feels... It's like if, hypothetically speaking, you had Friday the 13th take place in outer space or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, other negatives, I don't really like or care about any characters in this movie. The only character that I would even remotely care about, Jamie, dies in the first two minutes, unless you're watching the fiat or the, the, the producer's cut. Uh, but even then, she has nothing to do in this movie. It's it's really just disappointing. Yeah. And she's I mean, recast, too, I believe. I don't think that's Danielle Harris playing Jamie, which is a sad reality. And probably why she doesn't last too long in the movie, frankly. And yeah, whatever, I guess that's technically a spoiler. But again, it happens in like the first two, two minutes, minutes of the movie, yeah. so whatever. <laughs> um, Just wait till we get to Resurrection, because I have a lot to say about the first five minutes of that oh, movie. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, all you know, the, the plot sucks. I think the kills are actually pretty good in the theatrical version, but they get a little bit gimped in the producer's cut, because... The Weinstein brothers basically were like, it needs more gore to sell, it needs more gore to sell, it needs more gore to sell. And so that's why there's, like, way more gore in the theatrical cut. But, uh... It's raining red, it's Oh, yeah, like, that red. was that was something they changed, which was, like, very pointless. Like, oh, like, the girl's singing about blood raining on her? Well, I don't know, we can't have her do that. I don't know, I guess my, <laughs> guess, my guess is, like, people... My guess is, like, they probably thought, like, that might be a bit too creepy for the scene or something. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, I don't know, man. you know Weinstein how I said, I think the moral <laughs> of this whole thing is, you know how I said that in Halloween 3, the producer, um, the higher-ups are not necessarily your enemies? Harvey Weinstein is your enemy. Yeah, they're not your friends either. Good to keep that in mind. <laughs> That, like, they aren't necessarily your enemies, but they aren't also necessarily your friends. Especially when, you know, one of them is Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, um, the, the best person that's ever lived, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. He, he had his dirty hands in too anyway. many parts of people's lives. <laughs> uh, no, but I'll say this. Between five and six, if you want something to laugh at... This is probably fun. This is, five. like, the yeah. closest... 
a Halloween movie gets so far that I've seen to being like so bad it's good. It's not even that the movie itself is so bad it's good. It's that there are some scenes in both of these movies, five and six, that are so bad they're good. Yeah. Um, really, this just isn't the franchise to watch for movies like this. I would say, unless you're trying to marathon the entire series like we are, don't watch yeah. anything like past three, at least in the, uh, at least in like the original timeline movies. I don't know. Um, I think I think five is recommendable. I, um, I like that movie. It's it's recommendable for like certain scenes, but it's not a good movie. I mean, we. It's a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> None of these movies are good movies, like Citizen Kane or something. Well, but, yeah, like, but Halloween even Five like, is a very enjoyable slasher movie, so I would recommend it, it to is. pretty much anyone who likes slasher. Yeah, movies. but I would still like recommend like the first three or yeah, uh, you know, I can twenty eighteen H two O. Um, I see your point. I'm just saying yeah. don't not watch it. If you like the first two, I would still say watch four and five. But you could yeah. probably stop there and skip right to H2O, which yeah. we'll get to. But for this video, uh, I'm going to give Halloween 6, the producer's cut, a 4.5 out of 10. And the theatrical version, a 4 out of 10. It's not significantly better, but it's... It helps a little bit, so... Yeah, I actually have no disagreements with that score. That's what I would have given it as well. Um, I, right. I think that, again, these aren't really enjoyable movies. I don't know. Maybe you could, like, go on YouTube and find, like, a, like, best moments compilation or something, because I'm sure that exists. Um, and then, if you do that, you'd probably have all of the good that these movies have to offer. But uh, I would not recommend watching the actual movies. All right. So uh, without further ado, we bid you audio, audio do. do. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, guys. Uh.